So when I read the instructions, which is I had 10 minutes to discuss what I did before CMU, at CMU, and after CMU, I thought, all right. And uh, then I, I reread things. Anyway, uh, Herb Time used to say, don't cover sample. So I decided to focus on uh, one piece that uh, actually has to do with speech. Um, so uh, I guess after seeing you, I wound up spending 25 years getting computers to listen to children read. Um, and in 2012, I gave a talk on what did I learn about the speech part. Uh, and I think I'll skip, there's a very nice video here that I'll skip. Um, the point is child reads, computer listens. Uh, that actually came because Roz challenged the uh, robotics faculty, I think you were director of robotics, um, explain your research in 10 words or less. Because I uh, wanted everybody to be able to communicate what they did. With some help, I got it down to four words, child reads, computer listens. So why? Uh, let's see if this, yes. So one reason is a computer listening to, uh, kids intuitively understand that computer is a toy. So a computer listening to them is non-threatening. It's not an authority figure. Um, so it's a safe form of attention. And I've never met a kid who felt they were getting enough attention. Um, in real time, it needed to drive whatever the uh, tutor was going to do in response. Uh, it needed to track the location of the kid in the currently displayed sentence uh, by uh, listening to them figuring, okay, where's the kid in the sentence? Um, flag misuse, that's jargon for reading mistakes. Um, and also uh, rate their prosody. Uh, we didn't do this in real time, we did do it offline, but um, fluent reading is not just quick and accurate, it's expressive. Um, and uh, we wanted to be able to evaluate the prosody. Um, so in this lightning talk, I'm going to try to distill <laughs> Uh, what we learned about the acoustic models, the lexical models, the confidence scores, the language models, the alignment models, and the prosodic models. Uh, in, actually, I think four words or less for each one. All right, so acoustic models, quality uh, trumps quantity. Um, we tried augmenting, um, we had a somewhat large corpus of manually transcribed oral reading. We tried augmenting it with uh, more oral reading uh, that was transcribed only automatically by the speech recognizer. Uh, because we thought that might help accuracy. It didn't. It actually hurt. So uh, your mileage may vary. There's a lot of parameters there. Mm -hmm. But the lesson here was quality of training data trumps quantity. Uh, apology for the T word in that sentence. Um, <laughs> lexical model. Distractors detract. Um, to model false starts, we included phonetic truncations of the words in the sentence. I should explain that we had a dynamic language model consisting only of the words in the current sentence. So we added listening for phon phonetic truncations of them. That improved the, uh, the speech recognition accuracy. And then, uh, but we still were only detecting maybe uh, half of serious uh, miscues. Uh, so I spent years trying to listen for other things. Um, and the short version is Every one of them, yeah, it increased marginally the percentage of mistakes we could detect, but it also increased the percentage of mistakes that we hallucinated. And since uh, kids read most of the words correctly, um, that meant bad news. Um, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll come back to that in a moment as to what we did about it. Um, confidence scores. Uh, people tended to assume that the reading tutor used confidence scores to score how well somebody was reading a word. The problem is that scoring is only as good as the tracking. Because if you're wrong about which, kid, which word the kid is trying to read, then a confidence score is irrelevant. So um, tracking trips up scoring. Uh, language models rely on realism. Um, the better we could model children's oral reading, uh, the better we could track it. And uh, we wanted models that could boost uh, tracking accuracy dramatically. I'm not saying we found them. Uh, actually, each of these lessons in the talk that I originally gave was accompanied by a question that it led to, and I'm mostly skipping the questions. Um, mask mistracking, okay. So after years spending various 
uh, ideas of trying to model miscues, um, I thought, I am not winning this game. I'm going to change the rules of the game. So instead of what I call chase the kid, which is try to figure out where the kid is in the sentence, I changed it to something I affectionately call blame the kid. What do I mean by that? <laughs> well, let the reading tutor uh, decide where the kid is supposed to be. And then it's the kid's job to read that damn word. And determining whether the kid is reading a particular word is a much easier task than figuring out where the hell are they. Uh, Lynn Chase, who worked on uh, Project Listen, is, is nodding her head. And uh, let's see, I, I, and Raj is standing up, so I better speed up. OK. Um, so could we uh, use alignment and the interface uh, to hide tracking errors? Um, OK, prosodic model silence is a goal, which you may be thinking about the, uh, right now. Um, it turns out that the number, frequency, duration of silences uh, is a very useful measure for uh, measuring uh, fluency. Um, years later, we discovered it's not, the, the duration is irrelevant. The per percentage uh, turned out to be uh, informative. But that was after this work. Uh, so conclusion, your mileage may vary. And then what happened, this is the last slide. Then I won a million dollars, uh, but there's no time to talk about it. I'll just say that uh, one of the people in the photo you see here is a world-renowned expert in education technology. And the other one is her proud grandfather. <laughs> uh, and this is when she was a baby. So thank you very much.